can you explain why a parent would decide to go through the process of newborn stem cell preservation? There's actually two areas of science that are dependent on newborn stem cells for helping families. One of these areas was discovered, believe it or not, over 30 years ago, and that's where the stem cells are used for a bone marrow transplant. So the FDA has actually approved the use of cord blood for bone marrow transplant in the treatment of over 80 conditions. Now, fortunately, these conditions are very rare, so it's not very likely that your child will need to use a cord blood unit uh, for transplant. Um, but if they do, it's actually an amazing resource. Interestingly, most frequently, cord blood donations happen between siblings, and that's because siblings have a 75% chance of being an immunologic match, or at least a partial match. Uh, we recently shared a story about this family who had saved cord blood for their firstborn child. And when his baby brother was born, he was born with a rare genetic disorder called SCID. A lot of us know that as bubble boy disease. And his baby brother was a match to the older brother. Um, and so they were actually able to transplant the, the younger son using his older brother's um, stem cells, which was pretty incredible because of course, it's, it's an example of how families don't know how they're going to use these stem cells at the time that they preserve them, but it's, it was a pretty incredible story. The second way that stem cells are being used is technically innumerable ways because it all falls under the category of regenerative medicine. And regenerative medicine is this emerging area of medicine, um, lots of different techniques, and many of them are in clinical trials looking at stem cells derived from either the cord blood or cord tissue, these newborn stem cells. Most regenerative medicine clinical trials are actually using a child's own stem cells to treat a condition like cerebral palsy. Um, this is really interesting because there seems to be a population of cells that's very unique to umbilical cord derived stem cells. Um, where they're actually able to talk to the immune system, uh, they're able to stimulate the body to repair damage, uh, tissue damage, stimulate wound healing, and even repair nerve damage. So there's actually currently hundreds of clinical trials right now um, in areas like autoimmune disease, um, neurological damage, even lung damage from COVID believe it or not, um, that are using cord blood and cord tissue derived stem cells for regenerative medicine uses. So the future is very exciting. Um, you know, another really interesting thing to me is that a lot of the areas that are being investigated in this regenerative medicine area actually tend to be conditions that affect us more as we age. So I think the likelihood that a family will use their stem cells well into the future is only becoming more, more likely. That's wonderful. And I love that you shared that story of the family. That's great.